Back again, show and go. Here we are, 22nd of April. It's Wednesday. Um, it's been a pretty cool couple of days. We've had the Jordan doco. Um, we just had some news on Gronk, a bit of Lussick and Toddy Greenberg chat to come as well on this one. How's everyone going, Jackson? Looking sharp in the hat that everyone seems to want to buy off you. Yeah, yeah, good, mate. Now cruising. Yeah, it's been a big couple of days. Actually, some decent sports news for the first time in however fucking long. So, that's been a good couple of days, mate. What have you been doing, boss? Ice. What was that? Sorry. What do you think? Break doing? up for a bit. Sorry. What oh, no, no, no. Just work. Just working, right? Trying to keep the company alive. That's all. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Well, yeah, we've, we've all been in the, in the WhatsApp having a yarn about this one. The Jordan Doco. Two parts came out on Monday night. I loved it. I was just saying Ice offline, Jackson. I rewatched the first one again last night. I thought it was so good. Um, oh, yeah. We'll try and get a few takeaways out. So you might, your favorite part, best quote, and then just something that you weren't you were surprised with or anything like that so jackson what are your thoughts on the doco man yeah we spoke on monday like the biggest thing we didn't want it to flop so i don't think it flopped it was pretty fucking cool um so that was sort of the biggest Far thing we're like, sweet. yeah we're like sweet okay it's awesome um just espn just do it different man like their 30 for 30 is so fucking cool even like is it the music underneath it um, yeah, the 90s like sort of stuff. soundtrack behind the it. Like, tape, it like, yeah, it was just sick. So um, the coolest thing about it for me is like as a basketball fan, like watching his highlights is sick and like seeing how fucking crazy it is for him to drop 63 before they were even hitting threes really. Like when you mm. start to think about how good he was. But the coolest thing is I didn't really know that whole Bulls dynamic. I didn't know Scotty was so underpaid. I didn't know that there was friction with the owner. Like I just thought they were this GOAT team that just smoked everyone. So that was really interesting. But the biggest takeaway, obviously, we spoke about it yesterday, mate, was the kit. Holy fuck. Those track suits, man. It's like watching what porn for you, eh? I was, oh, I was unreal. I was like kicking the missus out of the room. The only, like, I was sitting there the whole time. Like, any, even the fans rocking in, I was like, fuck, what have they done with that jacket? What have they done with that hat? Like, yeah. You can <laughs> find some of it as well. Stuff. I did that a little bit too. Like some of the shirts, if you search like the graphic that's on the shirt, sometimes on yeah. Grailed or on Etsy, you can actually find that same bit of kit. Yeah, it's a bit of hard work. Yeah, I've been, I've been having a nosy. I just want one of those full track suits, those full, like, teal, yeah. multicolored track suits. Rocket to YKTR and that. But that was cool. Um, the, we haven't really seen the sports, sports dynamic of it. Like, um, in terms of, we spoke about him coming across as a dick. He looks intense, but I didn't get that vibe. So maybe in the next couple of episodes, but that was cool. He was pretty funny. I was rating. He was giving mad chat on Jerry Krause. Yeah, we just want to warm up right now. Right. So he's like, oh, Jerry, you need yeah. to lower the rim for you and shit like that. It sort of started, they're just sort of mixing. I love my one of my favorite parts of it was the way that they were blending the timelines together. So they had obviously uh, the 98. The what? That kind of did my head in a little bit. I, really? that, was, that was a little bit. Yeah, I, I prefer something a little bit more linear. Maybe it's just because I'm so simple. But I think they were like, just sort <laughs> of setting the, the story. So to start in 98, then yeah, to yeah. go back to him in college and then go sort of back and forth a little bit. I enjoyed that. Um, what are your thoughts on it, Ice? Yeah, he's sort of like, sort of that out of sight, out of mind. And I sort of touched on it last time where you watch LeBron and that bring the ball up court and Steph, and Steph Curry and that. And you kind of forget how good Jordan actually was. And I know you still see the highlights and something something about that vintage sort of look and, and the photos that, that have been taken on film has been crazy. But like the thing I just got out of him is just the way he carried himself was, um, especially for right from a young age. So like... Even just throwing all the boys underneath the cocaine bus as well. Fuck that, that, was, that How me. deep was that laugh when they, we threw the <laughs> quote at him? I've been cocaine circus. <laughs> <laughs> I never read that out. <laughs> and he's like, oh, this article referred you to as this. And he just had that real throaty laugh. Imagine being all the boys sitting at home just trying to explain that to with them. With their wives at home. <laughs> what? What well, is, he, uh, is he sweet? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I thought that would have been a giggle straight away. Um, also, just his mentality. So that time when he broke his foot and the doctor goes, um, I can give you 10 pills and like one of them oh, is going to end so your funny. career for the rest of your life. You'll never be able to play again. And he goes, would you take the pill? And his reply was like, how bad's my headache? If you had a terrible headache and I gave you a bottle of pills, and nine of the pills would cure you, and one of the pills would kill you. Would you take a pill? I look at him, I said, depends on how bad the headache is. <laughs> so fucking, yeah. 
just hearing that sort of stuff, I think um, when it comes to like sports people, and I know LeBron and that's really, really cool, but you can see from a marketing standpoint on why LeBron was the first sort of global athlete and why Jordans are worth billions and billions of dollars. It's just the way he carried himself in the media as well and just mm. the way he spoke. It was almost, almost like um, like Hollywood timing. Like everything was just so theatric about it, and just loved it, eh, To be honest, and I was it's probably the first time I've been locked in into like a show that hard for a while, where like not even looking at your phone or anything like that. I'm just going fucking how good's this? And when it ended, I was like, shit, I need more of this. It's like the whole front office versus the team was the crazy the, dynamic in itself. Like, funny, it's, funny, funny thing, funny thing is that would happen in so many sports teams. It's not even funny. So the, there's always sort of three stakeholders within the team. There's like the, there's like the owners and the, and the club, and then like there's the coaching staff and then there's the players. And obviously they'll, they'll probably like a rarity to this, but usually you want all of them to sort of mesh together for it to mm. blend in for it to work. But there'd be so many clubs within the NRL that are very similar dynamic to that where, and I've been at clubs where people hate the, um, hate the GM or hate the CEO or, uh, and you can really, we can really, really feel it because it's because um, they're fronting the camera saying one thing, and then they saying us to us players it's a different thing. So uh, you can, I could understand it hundred percent. Yeah, like the it's almost like it, like the way that it was like written on the book at the first meeting of the season, the last dance, the whole the team versus back office, and then Jordan coming out saying, oh, "I'm not playing. Why should I have to make a choice to play for another coach?" That's just pretty insane. The whole, the way yeah. that the whole thing came about. One of my favorite parts isn't it when he comes out in that second year and he's doing a press conference and Jackson would appreciate this, <laughs> and he's sort of just going, he goes like, I don't get it as an organization, like why are we trying to tank? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that, that imagine, whole thing. Imagine being just... your second year into, imagine being your second year into forty and you start bagging in the organization saying that they're losers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the whole was... thing of him playing seven minutes a half, like the load management for. It wasn't really load management. That's but the first I guess case of load management, isn't it? We talk about it now. That was kind of the first time we really saw it. But the thing for me, like the whole Jordan, like I never watched Michael Jordan play. So to me, this is what I'm going to take away from him. And obviously I know he was sick, but when me and Scope argue LeBron versus Jordan, I get the Jordan argument mostly because of games like that Celtics game where he's on a clearly worse team and he just comes out and gives him the business back-to-back games against one of the great teams of all time. Whereas LeBron at the same age when he plays the Mavs, he shrunk. He didn't want the ball. You know, LeBron had to really learn to kind of be that alpha. Whereas Jordan just came on the scene and was like, fucking give me the ball. So, like, I can get completely, when your eyeballs were on Jordan, why you'd 100% think he's the best player of all time. Like, the same as for me when my eyeballs are on LeBron. I'm like, well, there's fucking no one can do that. No one's as good as that. But that mm. killer Mamba mentality of, like, give me the ball. I don't give a shit if I'm Matthew Della Vadova's my next best player. Like, I'm going to fucking roll. LeBron Done. had to learn that. Jordan came into grade just like, fucking let's go. What, how, how, like, just his, just his athletic prowess. Like, you know when he does a jump shot in, in the mid-range? Like, he sort of just jumps up. He, like, out jumps him. And once they try to block him, and then after, after they come down, he's still up in the air, and he just sort of makes all the shots off the back of that. And there was that the early fact, footage where he hits his head on the back of the backboard as he's oh, falling yeah. backwards as well. He's like, like that's floating. some hops, man. He's floating when he goes up, man. He's the fake David Fussy Tua. He, like, hits, like, the top <laughs> of the shot and just stays there. It's fucking unreal. Scotty I, Pippen... Yeah, the Pippen yeah. part of it was interesting. I was about to really just show in them. One of my favorite parts was the story when he goes back to college uh, like just before he got put on load management minutes. And he's like, oh, you shouldn't be playing at all. And he, all of a sudden he's playing five on five back at school. <laughs> like just the mentality, man. But yeah, the whole Pippen. Um, my favorite part of that is getting to see Pippen college footage. Like that was sick. Like that's some proper, you've never seen footage like that before. And then the whole contract situation with him, fuck that. I'm not doing it on my time. I'm doing it on the, on the game's time. That's pretty crazy. Like, is that, you don't really see that these days or correct me if I'm wrong, Jackson. No, no, you don't. Um, uh, yeah, the Scotty Pippen thing, again, as much as I didn't know much about Jordan, I knew fucking nothing about Scotty Pippen. I knew that he was essential to them winning championships, but I never knew how good a player he was. And then like we touched on at the start, the pay thing was just insane. Like, I think they compared it to today's league. I think Andre Robertson's the 122nd highest paid player. It's like Sc- Scotty Bifflin's like top five in the game. So um, that was cool, but it sort of reinforced that sick idea in sport where one guy, even in basketball, which is so like, basketball, you can have the best player on the court and win a game, but you can't have the best player on the court and win a comp. You still need that, 
you know, Batman would two and a half. Yeah, you need two and a half superstars to win. So you need you need two stars, and you need yeah that wing guy that can score, and they they had that or that Rodman who can go and be the dirty you know the dirty bird. That was Steph Clay, and then they had Dre. So everyone's that, that sort of stayed true the whole way through. But yeah, the footage of Scotty Pippen was just sick, man. I, he's He's a weird looking cunt though. Like I, I couldn't stop staring With at the veneers and that. Yeah, oh, long head and that. Yeah, looks, yeah. It looks like he's got softball mitts on. Like, he's, and his voice is deep as shit. Like, he sounds like he's tall. You know, when someone sounds like they're real tall. <laughs> yeah, sounds yeah. like a giant. But you sound uh, like a real tall. With, with, yeah. with Pippin uh, Ice, do you feel like, given the circumstances that he was in, it was actually quite sad. Like the story of his dad having the stroke, and then his brother. He's one of twelve, which is crazy. But his um, his brother getting in the accident, at college wrestling, we had high school wrestling, and then he's in a so he's had two wheelchairs in his house. He's obviously been tabled that offer at the time before all the money's come into the NBA, and he's what seven years, eighteen million dollar contract, I think it was. Um, what do you like? I, I you understand why he signed it at the time and then the GM coming out or whoever that bloke was saying that we just don't renegotiate, period. <laughs> that's a bit harsh. Yeah. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on it, Ice? Um, first of all, like I've, I just appreciated the Scotty Pippen story of actually hearing about it. So him being an equipment manager in his first year and mm. in um, college was fucking mad or, or high school or whatever. And I do always love that narrative of when they start as a guard and they just shoot up over the summer. And I think Zion was very similar. He used to be a guard. Um, but AD just fucking, well. Yeah, AD, AD was another one. But that sort of, is, you can translate that over to football as well. Those sort of back rowers that start in the halves and develop their skill set and they kind of just grow too big, sort of like a Wade Graham style player. Um, but yeah, I just really enjoyed that. And then, yeah, just seen his college highlights. But you can understand why in 1990, whenever he took the second year contract and usually they sign for like four years off the back of that, why he took it. Obviously with family pressure and shit like that. Stephen Adams, he's got like, how many... How many uh, yeah, he's, he's, got, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, he's, he's got enough to start a footy side and have an 18th man. But <laughs> then um, he said, uh, I remember they asked him, why, why is he going to NBA? He goes, oh, I just want to like, help my family out with the money inside. So um, you can see that. Obviously, as an owner, you'd like to... Uh, this is what I would do, and it's easy to say this now, is um, like, as Scotty Pippen got better, obviously you'd top him up and stuff like that. But bit more. How does that... Can you tell me a little bit, mate, in terms of a professional sports contract? Say you signed for Penrith for two years, right? And your yep. first year, you absolutely fucking kill it. Are you entitled to go to the boss in that second year and say, mate, I want to top up? Yeah, yeah. I think our managers start to do that. I know I know a lot of the boys do do that. Like Jimmy Maloney was one at, at, at the Warriors at the time. He was probably... Yeah. Um, like he's probably paid what he was worth when he got there, but obviously he started to exceed expectations and was sort of just kicking up a fuss. And that's when yeah. media start to go to the guys like you guys and leak stories in the paper about unhappiness and leaving and stuff mm. like that. It's kind of that's kind of what Scotty Pippen was doing. He's just kind of just throwing his toys about in that last sort of season, and for good yeah. reason. You know what I mean? He deserved to be paid what he was worth. But I had to jump online straight away and check what he got paid over the next couple of years, and he yeah, ended up getting paid. Alert. I was waiting for that, and then you're like, "Okay, look at this." <laughs> I don't wait. I don't wait. I just go fucking bang. But then, in like, saying that, Michael, he was paid more than Michael Jordan over over um, his whole career. He was paid more than Michael Jordan. So um, I know Michael Jordan quit a little bit earlier. But then Michael Jordan, he was kind of underpaid for what he could do as well. So he not, started up, up into that last him. ride, up into that last ride season, he wasn't paid like anywhere nah, near what you. But he, he started would. doing the Sonny Bill one year contracts for a minute as well. I think he was getting like thirty mil a year. So yeah, got, which is great to like it as well. He mil. called it the Sonny Bill. Yeah, that's, mate, he's the one he pioneered that. Forget about Jordan. No, it was sick. I think um, the the thing with Scotty was yeah, the, the biggest takeaway you do feel for him like, and you can get it as. You know, if you're a young bloke, like you said, with a big family who came from real poverty, like you said, we didn't know we were poor, but they were fucking poor. And someone puts a big offer in front of you, you sign it, you know, you should definitely have scope to go renegotiate. I thought that was just a dick move by the owner to be like, nah, if you sign this, don't come back to me. It's like, bro, you run a business. And as your money, as the NBA's revenue started to spike and the organizations started to make money, you've got to compensate the players. So. But you've you got to think about organizations as well. So they've had so much success and he, he comes out and says, organization wins comps, not players. And you'll see guys like the Roosters that think exactly the same. You know what I mean? So they've just got rid of Latrell Mitchell, who's considered to be probably the second yeah. best player in their team. Like he's almost, I oh know he was paid probably a lot better than uh, in comparison to his teammates and stuff like that. But still, like, I think the Roosters will have that same sort of mentality because they've had so much success over the years. They're like, nah, the organization wins comps and not players. So I think that was a good analogy to transfer it back to. I reckon that's where we park it for now. I can't wait for next Monday. Got another eight oh, episodes. Next Monday? Sorry? 
Do they are they just dropping two each week? Or yeah, it's two each week. So we got five weeks. So that was the first week. So oh, yeah. we've got ten episodes, and yeah, I can't wait. I think the next one's going to be Rodman. Yeah, so yeah, that'll be mad. Have like you watched? Have you watched this one on Netflix? Or yeah, no, I need. I'm going to catch up on that before this one. Bro, you, fuck, that's a fucking... You wouldn't even think why he should be playing, like... He wasn't even playing NBA or, like, college football, uh, college um, ball anyway. Yeah. He's just living with this random little kid in that. Fuck, he's got a weird story, man. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. a strange guy. 100. Uh, yeah, so just before we jumped on this morning, um, news that Gronk signing with Brady. How good's that, Jackson? You love your NFL? Mate, unreal. I got, you know what I did? I had a cheeky punt on the, pa- on the Bucks, rather. Like, so, so Brady signed. About an hour later, I just emptied the TAB account on the Bucks to win the Super Bowl. Just thinking, like, I'd cash out when it dipped low, but fuck, I'm riding it now. Like, even if Gronk is, you know, he's had however long it is now, two seasons out, he's been doing his WWE. CBD oil. Yeah, just, just partying up and fucking getting his body right. He's lived a good retired back. life. Oh, he's the best retired life. He's running party boats in Florida and shit. Like, <laughs> that'd be all time to get on, but... Even if, if Gronk is 50% of Gronk, he's still in the top 10 tight ends in the comp at the moment. Like, the tight ends aren't that deep at the moment in, in the NFL. Like, they're all aging, or the young guys aren't quite there yet. So, and Brady's, in his age, he's, he's not going to be the big home run hitter. I know he's got amazing receivers that can do that, and he can muscle it downfield, but he's going to need his dink and dunk guy, and that's going to be Gronk. So, the Bucks have just gone from a, a Super Bowl smoky to a legit fucking contender. And I don't know what the – I think the Patriots get a fourth-round pick or something out of it. Not that they give a fuck because he wasn't going to play for them anyway. But it just goes to show that what we all thought – we all thought the Patriots were Brady's team, but we were always told that it was Belichick's team. But when this sort of stuff starts to happen and players come out of retirement just to play with the quarterback in Tampa Bay, you can start to see that it was, it was much more Brady than Belichick. And Scope will argue that till the cows come home. But I think it's pretty clear to see now that he had a clear presence over that locker room that even Belichick probably didn't quite have. It's going to be another good doco in a few years' time. Ice, I'm surprised we could get you on and you weren't trying to clean up all the Gronk rookie cards. What's... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny. I woke up and the first thing I've seen on Instagram was Gronk cards. I was like, what the fuck's happening here? Like, I had Brady and Gronk cards, like, signed PSA 10s. And I was like, and then I looked at your guys' thing the next day. But, yeah, fuck, I love it. Obviously, casual NFL fan, but everyone knows that dynamic. And I love the dynamic because, like, Tom Brady's, like, this mad fucking straighty quarterback, white, like, white boy, well polished, all that sort of stuff. And Gronk's just a little party boy, but they you know, you can see their boys and you can see like they actually care about each other and actually want to play for each other. And, and you probably see that they care about winning as well. Just need to get Edelman over. Did it, yeah. <laughs> did it sort of come out of nowhere, Jackson? Like, that's what I felt like when I was just scrolling. I'm like, oh, someone's taking the piss here. And then it was the actual NFL account. Well, Ian, Ian Rappaport like mentioned it. I think it was last week, but it was like a <laughs> passing tweet. It was like, he was kind of like, oh, you know, they're having a look at options. Let's not rule, you know, Rob Gronkowski coming out of retirement. But people have said that so much since he retired that I didn't even, like, bat an eyelash. I was just like, oh, yeah. Because he's not even that old, eh? No, I think he's the same age as me, bro. Yeah, he retired just um, – he just said it was just his body. He just couldn't – he couldn't go through another preseason. He, but he always kind of mooted that he was going to come back. He just was more like – If it was needs right. a rest, needs the CTE to sort of kick back and, you know, let his body sort of recover. And, I mean, imagine going down – you're retirement, you come out of retirement in Florida, catching balls from Tom Brady in a high powered offense. Like that, that Tampa Bay offense are run and gun. Like they just get the ball, get it out of your hands. They just zing it. Whereas the Patriots are much more like run those tight lines, wear a shot, run the football, you know, Edelman underneath, Emin Dollar underneath. That was their sort of thing. Fuck, the Bucks are going to be sent in four boats deep every time. So it's going to be interesting. Bro, he's born in 1989, so he's only 30. Yeah, yeah and he's got another. I mean, if he was held, but the thing with Gronk is he is such a physical player that in football years he's fucking forty two. Like yeah, he true. Gets, he's beating the shit out of the tight end. He does a lot of blocking, which people he's very underrated as a blocker, Gronk, because he's such a good athlete. But he does a lot of dirty work on running plays, which is why it's so cool in Tampa because they pretty much don't fucking run the ball. <laughs> so yeah. he's just going to be out there catching highlight real home run plays. So it's sick, man. I don't know how having Gronk in Florida is going to go from an off-field, uh, pres- you know, standpoint. Yeah, Tom Brady's putting him in line, there, isn't he? He's been around Brady Tom Brady long enough, yeah. And I saw another thing, Danny Amendola was having a sniff around getting a release from Detroit, so he might go link up in the slot as well. And then they got the crew back together, so who knows? Um, yeah, so moving to the bit of local news now, Ice, your boy Lusik, his, his right hook on Instagram is just as good as it is in the ring. <laughs> that little bit of good <laughs> chat back to Naz. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, it's funny. Darcy messaged me not, not long after that day and he said, oh, are you guys going to sponsor, sponsor me this year or what? So I think it's got a bit of legs to it as well. I think um, 
I think he got paid out a little bit for who he was fighting at the time. And it seemed like a big fight. Like the Justin Hodges is sort of like, who's going to win this? Like, who, who knows? And obviously Darcy got him. But that, that I don't know, if he can, if he can beat Nelson Asafa Solomona as well, I think like, that's unit. a massive type. Yeah, big unit, bro. You forget how fucking huge he is, bro. He is massive. Like Darcy's, Darcy's big, but Nelson's so much bigger. So I don't know. I, I think it would make for a much more interesting contest. It's, uh, like Obviously, obviously Nelson's a lot bigger than him, but then Darcy's had that experience of one fight in the ring. And does Nelson blow himself out? or does it, But I think it's going to be, if it happens and, and Darcy's paid right, I think he'll definitely do it. Have, it's um, are you into the boxing fights, Jackson? The, the local NRL guys having a crack? Yeah, 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 of course. Especially, I think I've got a soft spot for Big Nelson. He's a he's such a good dude, man. Like, he's... I, I, yeah, I great that, guy, great guy. Great guy, man. I thought Patrick Tuipilotu was the biggest human I'd ever interviewed, but during the World Cup when Nelson was here, holy fuck, man. Even his <laughs> jaw, like, it's, it's like this fucking thick. He's so big, man. And, you know, he, he punches on for fun in Bali, so he's, he's got a bit of experience as well. But I don't know, like, Darcy is... Is obviously game. He's keen. Fuck him in the ring with Nelson, man. I don't care if he's had one boxing training session or zero. Like, I know <laughs> technique counts for so much, but when you're that much of a fucking unit, I mean, I've never met Darcy. Like, if you had to compare the two, just tail of the tape, how much bigger is Nelson? Because he's a fucking uh, yeah, way bigger. So like the the height that um Darcy would have on me, um, Nelson would have that on top of him. So I don't know. I think I think Nelson's like six five, six six, eight, easily. Oh. Easy, mate. Easy, yeah. He's like the size of LeBron, like pretty much the size of LeBron. Darcy's, bro, Darcy's a big human as well. But think of Darcy, man. He's got a screw loose, man. He'll, like, once nah. he switches, once he switches, he's a fucking nutter. So um, it'd be interesting to see how he goes and sort of if he tries to outbox him. And, um, like, I don't know. I think it'd be a good, really good fight. And there's two people that people actually want to see fight as well. So Paul Gallon would be filthy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so. Yeah, for the high, it's Lussex one ninety three, and Nas is two meters. I tell you what they, I tell you what they don't have on there is that Nelson's hands are like fucking lunch boxes. They're literally like this big, bro. He he walks around almost dragging his knuckles like he's fucking huge. So, mm. but I, I think it'd be an amazing fight, and I'd love to see Sonny Bill get in the ring with a winner or something like that. But I know I think Sonny's got a clause to have three fights this year in his. Well, I saw there was fight. another article that came out that said Sonny Bill versus Paul. G- um, uh, Barry Hall. Barry Hall. Yeah, yeah. That's what I just said, yeah. Oh, and I saw Sonny Bill wants to take on Barry Hall. Listen up, bro. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, they. I think. I think his Wolfpack contract has three a three fight clause, if I'm not mistaken. So, but I don't know. Obviously, with coronavirus, that's been all thrown into whack. But I think he's allowed to fight three times this year, and he said he wanted to. So if he, you know, he'd smoke Barry Hall, easy. That's not even a fucking question. And then get him. Isn't, in the he, room with isn't Barry Hall all right? Isn't he? No. Oh, no, yeah, and Sonny. Come on, son. And then. Yeah. I, I think know. Darcy. I think Darcy knocking about with Sunny all the time. So Darcy would be in all the undercards as well, yeah, scooping up a bit of money from behind him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I do. the thing is with the Darcy Lussick and Naz fight, there's a good story that you can put behind it because you've got people saying that he's got, like you said at the start, Ice. He's like anyone could have got through Darcy's last fight. Um, mm. And then you've got Nas. You got everything that happened in the off season. That like throwing punches like crazy. That footage. It's almost like you could be like Dana White, like Conor McGregor throwing the thing through the bus. If you wanted oh, to promote it like that, you could very easily promote it like that. And probably the boys, it'd be a no limit fight. So um, the the Rose boys, they'd be the ones behind it. So I reckon it, there's promo in it, and they could sell it. Plenty of promo NRL, in it. NRL would not have that fucking. They would not let Nels fight if they're going to use promo of him flogging some bloke in Bali. Not a chance. Yeah, I can dream. You can dream. <laughs> I'd use it. I'd, I'd, no, I'd we'll, use it. we'll tell the story. We'll tell yeah, the story we'll for free. Anyway. <laughs> who, who's, who at the NRL right now is going to say no to it? We lost Todd Greenberg this week. That was the next topic that we we're going to go into. Um, what are your thoughts on that ice? And we've that had a little very bit good of chat before. Very good segue that. that was good, very mate. Good all right. hey, I'm getting better at this. <laughs> That was, yeah, that was fucking smooth. Sorry, what was the question, mate? We're so um, sorry, we're just admiring that. Yeah, go on. Yeah, admiring that segue. I was saying that nobody in NRL can sign off on at the moment. We lost Todd Greenberg this week. Um, what are your thoughts on it, Ice? Um, and I, did you watch Deenan's thing yesterday as well? I thought that was quite interesting. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have too much of an opinion on it because I don't really know the full facts. It's mm. easy to look back in hindsight and look at all the money that's been lost and go, oh, look at that. Like, everyone could do that. Like, people could do that with our business. People could do that with your life. Like, girlfriends do that. 
all the time in relationships. Oh, remember you done that back then? And that's what, that's kind of what it's like. And it's almost like this um, online bullying tactic. And I do understand once you're the head of a company that, that the ownership lies on you. So say YKTR, for example, if things fuck up, it's on me. Like I'm not trying to point the finger anywhere. So um, I did find it interesting that he um, jumped before he got pushed, but I think Jackson would probably be the right guy to talk to about this. Cause yeah. I don't really have an opinion on it. I'm not an educated opinion anyway. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't pretend to know any more facts than any, any other, anyone else that's reporting the same shit out there. I know that the line in the what sand was it, came... It was linked out for Warriors phone call or something like that, wasn't uh, it? Or? I think it was a matter of if, not when, but that was sort of the straw that broke the camel's back. They were on a call with uh, so Cameron George, the Warriors CEO, Peter Vlandes and, and Todd, um, and Cameron, which I spoke to you guys about last week, that the Warriors are getting a little bit frustrated with the lack of communication. Um, and it wasn't even the fact that they weren't getting the right answers. They weren't getting any answers. And they have to be there for the competition to start. That's what well, actually was when Justin was on. And we we're talking about, you know, they were having all these broadcasting negotiations and where they're going to play and all this stuff. They didn't even have the players in the fucking country. So you can't start a comp until you have the boys ready to go, until the teams are out of isolation, they're all training together. So why are you bothering negotiating with broadcasting? And I get the business is important, but if you don't have a fucking product, what are you doing? So that was from... What I understand that was the Warriors coming and saying, listen, at least you can get us there and start talking to us. What the fuck's the point in having all these chats? And Peter Blandy sort of turned to Todd and said, mate, why aren't you talking to these boys? And the Cowboys are having similar problems with them. There's a couple of other clubs that had similar problems with Todd. But look, it's not his fault. I mean, fuck that for a laugh having that job. I mean, I'd, I'd be out of it in two weeks. So he's lasted, you know, as long as he did. It's an easy scapegoat for Peter Blandy's in the NRL in a little bit. They can sack Todd and kind of, now you start looking at all that mismanagement of funds and you go, oh, that was fucking Greenberg's, you know, that was under Greenberg's watch. He's not the one moving all the money, man, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's the guy at the top, like you said, but if your business completely fucks up, certainly some of that falls on Lukey. Some of that's going to fall on Natasha. Some of that's going to fall on all the boys. I know you're going to be the ultimate, you know, leader of the ship that goes down with it, but there's a lot of other moving parts here which are out of Todd's control. So I do feel sorry for him, but... Who's next in line, worry. Jackson? Who's next in line? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Uh, look, that's a good question, man. I, I don't have a short list in terms of who I would prefer to see there. Um, I know that Phil Gould has, is the one that everyone kind of wants. Um, from my understanding, again, this is just what I hear, that Peter Vlandes and, and Phil aren't super tight. <laughs> they're not, they're not too on the same page with a lot of things. Um, I think that uh, Pierce Senior would be a good look. I know that he's sort of on that Apollo board. Um, is, it Wayne? is it Wayne Pierce? Yeah. Sorry. Just, yeah. Wayne I know Pierce, Wayne Pierce is a fucking awesome. smart guy and I know they've tried the footy head in there before but he's a different sort of footy head he's a very level smart businessman as well so that's the different direction they could look or they could try to do it by committee whereby you elect sort of three people to do it mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's a, it's like president of the fucking United States I don't think any one person can do it so do something like that by committee get an elite team get a footy player a businessman and you know someone else from a different field cover your bases three three pronged attack because, I mean, you look at, say, Super Rugby, like Raylene Castle, the same thing's going to happen to her soon, whether it's on a call with the Blues or whatever, there's going to be one moment where, you know, she's this close to the edge, same as Todd was, and that call with the Warriors pushed him off. Raylene Castle's on the edge as well. So it's the reality of this shitty virus and being in a position and, you know, a person in charge. Yeah, right. Well, I think we've, we've run out of time on how much I can screen record here, guys. So I think that was a nice, healthy one for today. I can see the Scopes just DM'd his... He's rap of Gronk, so that'll be an interesting one for the Instagram today. Oh, we'll be back you know, Friday. Better than opening your phone and seeing that mug pop up. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> here we Big go. What, what's Scope up to here? All righty, boys. Is, thanks is for that today. a right or no? Is that a right or no? Yeah. Yeah, should I do it again? Or? <laughs> no one says anything. He sends another one. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, boys. All right, boys. Catch us later. Later.